Alrighty, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys have been doing well. I know it's been a minute since we put something out, but here we are. And as you guys know, the Dungeon Fighter Duel beta has been going on this weekend. Same with KOF 15. But what I want to talk about in this video in particular is my impressions on the DNF Duel beta and some things I kind of pay attention to, some things I like, some things I don't like. But I'll do my best to keep it short, sweet, organized, the best as I can, because it's just off rip. We just got done streaming. Figure might as well just make this and just knock it out. But yeah, uh, before I get started, you guys know the routine. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Do your boy a solid. Subscribe, notification bell, all the other good stuff. Blase, blase, whoop de woo. Now let's talk about DNF Duel and uh, basically what I feel about this game currently. All right, so it kind of goes like this. I know a lot of you guys saw my last video about it and I was just kind of like disappointed about them doing a, you know, a trailer showing something off about the game right after Project L and all that stuff. Fast forward, they've been putting out character trailers and things like that, showing off little bits and pieces of the game. But I wasn't the happiest because they're showing us these 30 second trailers and I have no idea what it is with like their marketing about this game because I think it's I'm not gonna lie I think it's pretty poop I think it's pretty trash I think the way they're marketing the game is really bad I get it we're living in the TikTok era and 30 second clips is like cool to some degree but I think that it's actually bad when it comes to gaming in this regard because you know as you guys know, before the game came out for beta, they're like, yeah, we're gonna release these, like every so often we're gonna release, you know, video footage of like different parts of the game. And it's kind of like, why are you trying to drip feed us, you know, information about your game? Why not just have an all-inclusive video to explain the system mechanics, how the game works? You even gotta show a match feeder, just explain the system mechanics. Instead they force feed us, or not even in this case, force feed, drip feed us, you know, he hears these videos based on certain parts of the game. I think any content creator could, you know, literally make a video and like explain the system mechanics way better than the, the developers can. I think that that's kind of sad. So the way I feel about the game outside the game, I just haven't been a biggest, I haven't been the biggest fan of the marketing, which is why I've done no reactions to any of the character trailers or anything like that, because it just feels so slapstick. There's mouse pointers and all kinds of stuff in these trailers. It's kind of like, Half-assed. Feels very half-assed to me personally. Even in the later ones, there's lots of mouse pointers. Regardless, it just it just feels very slapstick, and I'm not the biggest fan of that stuff personally. So everything outside of the game has me has had me frustrated, and I'm just like, whatever, right? Fast forward, now I'm able to play the demo. The first night was very frustrating because we couldn't get on. But that seems to be like the case with all these fighting game demos, right? Day one, you're not able to play. But what really had me was they put the ability for you to play against the CPU and they randomize it for your, the character that you get to play. I think that that's kind of cool, but also bad at the same time, because it's like, if I'm in this beta, I want to pick the character I want to learn, you know, or at least mess with. And yeah, that was pretty down bad to get a random character and sometimes roll on the random select like the same character I don't want to play you know for quite some time that's really bad I think that was a terrible decision on their behalf and uh the other thing about that day one too and just moving forward with it not even just day one but like outside of connectivity issues and that like one of my gripes with this game or this beta for that matter is that they offered no training mode no tutorial mode just online and to me, I could care less what anyone says about this personally, because it's totally how I feel. I think playing a fighting game nowadays and releasing a fighting game in beta form without a training mode, I think is very, very bad. Even if it is a beta demo, it doesn't make a difference. Or you could have made it where it's arcade mode or something like that. That's on super easy. That lets us figure out combos against the CPU so we can actually practice some kind of conversion to play against our opponents. 
you know, instead we're sitting here mashing buttons, trying to, you know, sure we're testing the online. That's great. That's obviously what this is for. But like for us to really kind of dive, you know, dive into your game, I would assume that you want us to at least know the system mechanics, what have you in the tutorial mode, you know, setting. And this was something that people harped on for Strive. You know, there wasn't a tutorial mode in like, I think the very first demo, but they put it in, in the next two, which was good. Some were upset about other aspects of it, but to me, it's like, as long as there's like a training mode or at least arcade mode and a tutorial mode to teach us like the system mechanics at the least, like I'll take that over nothing at all. And I think that if you're defending that, I think we got to come to the realization we can't just keep accepting things from demos that are subpar because KOF 15 released a, a, a beta same time frame and there's a training mode. You know, there's no excuse as far as I'm concerned. Just actually no excuse. But moving on from that, and I know this is starting out kind of negative. You're probably like, where are the positives? Well, when the game was working and we were able to play against friends and things like that and just be able to get online and play in general, it was good. But of course, with the good comes the bad because, you know, you make a lobby and it was like ridiculously hard to find a friend in their lobbies, you know, so that's kind of bad. But when it worked, it worked. You know, sometimes, you know, I try to connect to a friend, I couldn't connect. Or try to connect to their lobby, I wouldn't connect. Try to play against them, it wouldn't connect. Or in some cases, they would just disconnect the entire freaking lobby. It, it just, there was a lot of desync, disconnections, like type issues, I think were really bad. Um, I do wish that there was some kind of like, you know, invite feature in the game to invite your friends to play because come on, should be a feature in the game, right? So when you put all that in perspective, it's just kind of like, wow, you guys just kind of missed the mark in terms of inviting people or making it easier for us to find, you know, our friends where we're, wherever we're at. But on the positive side, again, again, those guys looking for positives, you know, they did take the lobby system back to Grand Blue, you know, Exerd. It works, it's functional. It's, I still believe wholeheartedly this game is a complete facelift from freaking Grand Blue, but whatever. Anyway, the, the, the lobby in itself, it, it works for the most part. You know, there's not really, as far as I can see, there's nothing really wrong in there. So, I think they did a good job in terms of the lobby system and spectating. I think the spectate mode is pretty good. Uh, pretty much everything in the game, for the most part, is pretty good. Like, it's not too bad. Uh, I will say, from a gameplay standpoint, I had a lot of fun playing it, despite my gripes with the things I mentioned earlier. Obviously, I'm playing Kunoichi. I thought I'd play Inquisitor, but I ended up on Dragon Knight and Grappler. I think those three characters are really fun to play. Also played a tad bit of Ranger, but I'd probably say I played outright the most Dragon Knight, Kunoichi, and Grappler, and all three of them are very, very fun characters to play. I do think the game does have a fun factor. I do think that it is not necessarily a bad fighting game. In fact, there are some interesting aspects of this game that push the notion of the things I've been talking about on this channel before. You know, we just put out a video recently about easy inputs and stuff like that. This game is completely centered around the easy inputs, you know, forward, down, back, up, special, you know what I'm saying? And in this case, uh, magic point, freaking move. So it's like you, you have these simple input things and like they still made it fun. So I'll just take a small jab at, see, it's not all that scary having simple inputs. So imagine Project L doing the same thing and having it being a team game. All right, that's enough on Project L and easy inputs, but you know, there are things gameplay wise that I think are definitely needing a fixing. I know one thing a lot of people watch this part say, yeah, you're probably thinking of Inquisitor's Wheel. Inquisitor's Wheel is very good, but I think it's definitely overrated. I don't think it was great for Oki as much as people made it out to be. Even I, when I tested it, it's like, yeah, it's not that great. But when I say things are fixed, like I think the multi-hitting moves are fine. I think the issue that I have is the defense on the multi-hitting moves feel a little wonky. Of course, you can just block it out and it's fine. You get, you know, you take a little bit of like recoverable health. You know, you can get the recoverable health back, which is great health. Totally fine. 
but I think one of the best ways I found to get people off of me for doing those moves was to use the guard cancel, which was forward, was it medium and special? While blocking, and you need a hundred meter. My complaint about that, pretty sure it costs a hundred meter for it, but my complaint is why make this defensive mechanic cost so much, but the the move that I'm trying to reverse will cost nothing. So it, it kind of begets the question, why not just make the counters 50% meter instead of like 100% meter or, or MP in this case to get someone off of you. It's kind of like demanding, you know, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll just have to see. Um, That was one of the qualms I had, I think. I'm okay with most things in the game. So I think that part of the game I think is a little skewed. I think the general mobility feels good. Like I said, I mean, a lot of the cast members feel really good to play. I think personal favorite obviously was Konichi, who much, you know, I'm sure I'll get asked this question too in the comments, but who do I think was the best in the beta? Probably Konoichi. If I had to bet my bottom dollar, I think she was really, really strong. I know a lot of people probably say Crusader, but I think, nah, I think otherwise. Not that Crusader is bad or anything like that. I just, you know, not making a big deal about Chillers or anything like that either. But yeah, that's who I thought was probably numero uno. Um, but I'll say on a connection standpoint, everything seemed fine. It felt, it felt pretty much like Strive, you know, really, really good. And no hiccups really i've had maybe like two or three really bad laggy matches but like outside of like those two or three like it was fine totally fine yeah um i'll see what else i can give you guys but literally when everything started working it was fun to play i'm not even gonna act like the game's not fun i do think that there's gonna be you know a layer or layers of depth behind the game despite the easy inputs and things like that it's fun it's definitely a fun game it's definitely a fun game so would i buy it for 60 bucks that's a different story don't know if i would buy that game for 60. um i do have some concerns which i will say really briefly about this game not too much about the beta but just in the future like I'm hoping that it is Nexon. I can think of the, de the developer for a second. Yeah, I really hope that Nexon takes, you know, the wheel and controls the esports side of things, aka the tournament scene. It's cool to have the majors run everything and all other good stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. It's always going to be great to see the grassroots guys run it. But I'm surely hoping that they treat this game more like Dragon Ball and do like their own like nationals and all kinds of stuff like that so that yeah it just it just it just feels so much better when the developer steps in and does things again not to knock any other tournament organizer or anything like that they're all great fantastic people that do great work for a lot of little you know for very very little thank yous and etc cetera, etc cetera, right but you know i'm a big firm believer of like the developer should step in and start doing stuff because you know the competitive side of this game also matters too uh, but obviously first and foremost fun but again i'm just gonna be the guy to just cross my fingers and hope they handle the tournament scene so yeah i think that's kind of it there's a few other things i could say but i really just wanted to get this out get this hashed out and get this ready for you guys because it's important to talk about it and it's been a little while since we put anything else up on the channel so why not so yeah, with that being said, I'm going to cut it here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah, just let me know how you guys were feeling about the beta. Let me know in the comments below. Talk to me, let me know. If you enjoyed yourself, you thought things were a little wonky, what have you. Talk to me, let me know, let me know. Anyhow, let me get up out of here. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.